Today is the last day in Rome, and we are taking a guided tour of Palatine Hill, the Roman Forum, and the Colosseum. The Lady in Yellow is our tour guide today. As you can see, it's raining. I highly recommend you take a rain jacket and an umbrella when you visit Italy. I'm not sure if it's just the season we're in, but we've seen a lot of it. of the Roman holiday that was Saturnalia in December. When Christians survived, adapted to those dates, uh, their holidays, so like that the conversions would be much easier and that's why they do fit also because the stars are the ones that do govern our way to orient ourselves to, uh, to, to explain all sorts of different things. If you look, you can see where the wheels of the chariots went through. These are 1,600 years old. You can see where the chariot wheels went. See how that's grooved out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Pardon me, excuse me, coming through. Columns are single pieces of marble. Egyptian marble through the Nile, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Roman River. Egyptian marble. I call them the Laurel boys. Wow. This is crazy. Domitian, who built the Colosseum, 
wanted a palace and this is it. Remember, back in the day, these walls were most likely lined with marble. You can see the holes in the walls where it would have been mounted. Lined arch for strength. Can you imagine laying each of these little pieces one at a time? Tiberius House. Good. Look at the work up there on the thing on the side. No, we're still not at the top.
parce qu'ils ont fait un seul, ils n'ont pas cherché à faire croire quoi. and glimpse of the Roman Forum framed by the arch. Constantine's arch.
As you look at this corridor, on the right you can see that the stone is much darker. This thing has endured, I think, three fires and four earthquakes over the centuries. They have cleaned the wall on your left, but not the one on the right, so you can see the difference. And again, notice the holes in the stone. This would have all been lined with marble at one time. This is how gladiators would have entered into the arena. Welcome to the arena floor of the Colosseum. Imagine for a moment that as you walk in here, that these stands are full of thousands of people waiting to see whether or not you will survive. Over a million animals and 400,000 human beings lost their life in this very space. So we're here inside the Colosseum. We just finished our tour and the rest of our time is ours, so we're letting our feet rest while we sit here. I just wanted to show you guys a couple things. The marble seats would have been the first layer for higher status. Above that would have been stone seats and above that would have been wooden bleachers. Imagine between 50 and 80,000 human beings in this space, in those bleachers, cheering on animals, theaters, gladiators. This is the underground for the Colosseum. So imagine a giant wooden stage, wooden floor over the top of this. Animals and gladiators would have been ushered through these corridors. You'll notice some of them are thinner. That would probably be where an animal came through so that the animals could not turn around and bite the people. So I don't know if you can see it in there, but there are ropes and pulleys that were used This is another view from the underground. No. 
you'll notice all of the archways. A big thing with the archways is structure, strength. The parts that are missing were damaged during an earthquake in the 1400s, correct? I think it's 1440 something. All right, let's go find our way. There would have been massive statues in each of these archways. And this whole entire thing was covered in marble. That's what all the holes are for. This is what it would have looked like before destruction hit it. This building is also used as a guide for stadiums even today. This is also still the largest amphitheater in the world. The 
Coliseum Square. And I don't remember what the giant temple over there was for. There was obviously at one time a massive statue in that alcove. And that might be where they put the colossal hero. I bet that's where it went too. The guardians of the Colosseum. Arch of Constantine. And our final pizza stop, Bonsi Pizzerium. This guy is famous for his dough and crust, so we just had to try it. Got to video. It's really pretty good. Two very different pizzas, two different crusts. We're tired. Uh, Our bodies ache. It's the fifth full day, and let me tell you guys. We be tired. We're whooped, okay? I'm just going to tell you. We kicked our butts. Well, I think some big things. Number one, if we have a tour, we take a taxi. It is too stressful to try to get to a tour with taking the commuter train and blah, blah, blah. Number two, we need a rest day in the middle. This is five days nonstop. It's like Disney. Is what we would like in this too. As many people, non-stop lines, steps, standing in lines, no place to sit. Very similar to the aches and pains of Disney. And so um, today we took oh. fifteen thousand three hundred and twenty-six steps, according to Dana's phone. We took a cab this morning. Yeah, and that was with a cab. And really, actually, a subway that took us almost right to where we were going. But we also ate at the famous Pizzeria today. Supli Trastevere is better. Yeah, the Supli was better than Trastevere. I think Pizzeria bread was really good. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, the... Um, my favorite gelato of the trip was over by the Coliseum where the nuns were. They knew what they were doing. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was the best really gelato. Good. It was all good, but it was the best. Yeah. And we've tried different flavors over there. Yeah. So. Salt de caramel is my favorite, of course. Now, that's not the one that was no, over. That was a different one. No, the other one was creamier. And yes. Yeah, it as was. As far as, like, the flavor. And we've eaten some croissants today, of course, and we've got some croissants for tonight in this hotel room because we're not going back out. <laughs> we're going to pack, and we're going to get ready to get up really early again tomorrow morning because tomorrow we have about a 25-hour, give or take, travel day. We will leave this hotel at what would be midnight home time tonight and we will get to dfw at midnight the next night and then we got to get to our vehicle so and that's with no delays yes. we were lucky on the way in so that's assuming i always hope that if we have delays it's on the way home not on the way in. absolutely absolutely so. oh my god riding the subway today was oh tough. oh my god you want to talk about sardines Whoo! it was rough i mean tell you I we was... were squished in there were just people and people and people and, and people. they just kept coming 
Oh my God, so many people. I found myself like <sighs> <laughs> trying to find some USA. I gotta be okay. I'm standing on the beach. I'm all by myself. There's a cool breeze blowing in my face. I oh, thought I was, was hot. There was and no I, air. Guys, I'm not even kidding you. I'm talking about, I can't tell you how many you, human beings were touching my body at one time without my permission. Yeah, everybody that was next to me. I you. mean, I bet there was one, two, three, plus holding my and hand. And in here because they're holding on to the pole. Yeah. So today was rough. Surprisingly, the worst. Like, we came home on Saturday night. I think it's because we came home in the middle of what is their rush hour. <sighs> It was just crazy. Insane. Insane. When we first got on, it was nice and empty. And we're like, oh, this ain't bad. Each stop And then the next worse. stop, it was like, oh, my God. Yeah, it was pretty intense. So, and of course, nobody got off till we got to Termini. No. And so we've walked through Termini, hopefully, for the last time, like, ever. <laughs> Because to get to our train, you had to go to Station 27. I swear to Jiminy, it was a it half was a, mile. At least. I would say further. We haven't clocked it. And when I you got off the subway further. to the train, is a long way. A long way. A long ways. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And when you're tired, we, we tried to find a cab to come home, but we couldn't find a cab. And we were right next to the metro, and it's like, I'm not walking for a cab. No. I'll just go get on the train. So we got on the train, we and walked we through became sardines. We might have should have walked for a cab. <laughs> it would have been a much more pleasant trip and a quicker trip. Yes. So, anyways, it's been fun. Um, we did do it on a budget. I don't know how much that is yet. I'll let you know. But I'm guessing probably around $2,000 total for the entire trip, including our tours, food, food. transportation, souvenirs. souvenirs, the whole shebang. Um, Which I think we only got four magnets, maybe. I think so, plus one for Mom. Oh, we yeah. couldn't talk about. Yeah, we can't show that one. <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, yeah, we didn't buy a bunch of stuff, and we kept our food relatively cheap. Um, the piz pizzeria was a little expensive. It was 22 something um, for what I paid, like, what did I pay? I think 10 or $12 at the Supli Trastevere, in, in Trastevere, for both meals. And so that was... But two suppleys and two big chunks of three chunks of pizza. You ate three chunks of pizza? Well, then we got the first one and then I got two more to bring back here. I ended oh, up throwing some of that right. away, but still that was three chunks of pizza. We're at today we got two chunks of pizza and two small a suppli and a mozzarella thing. And it was like twenty three dollars. So, it was more than double what we paid at the place in Trastevere. Which is crazy. It was a lot further away from all the touristy yeah. stuff. It's not far from the Vatican. It wasn't? No. it didn't. We didn't notice that because we were in the subway when we got there. But uh, it's actually not very far from the Vatican. It's like on the... Like, the Vatican is here. And St. Angelo's uh, Monument is here thing. It's on the upside of the Vatican, opposite of the Castello. Castell. So, anyways, we learned a lot. Um, I always learn stuff on trips. We enjoyed the Coliseum. That was really neat. Uh, it was a fast tour. You have to really listen. Mm-hmm. Process. Try, try to process a lot of well, information. Even though she spoke basic. English well, her language speaks faster than ours so when she speaks english she's speaking faster yes and i struggle when people speak it really it's fast. hard to absorb it all but it, she did great mm -hmm. she was very knowledgeable she was sweet. Sweet. oh she got hot to try because the bathrooms were closed at one place oh and, and she had, had told the palatine people, hill well and she had told people to wait to get to the next bathroom because it was a multi-shooter and then it was closed Yes. Yeah, she said she's going to be sending some emails. <laughs> she did. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was neat. It was super cool. Coliseum is really amazing. Really big. It's cool to think that that is, like, 
our blueprint for so many other buildings stadiums. and stadiums going forward. Well, and the way they laid out the seats are like the same how we, you know, you have your different sections and whatnot. You knew where to, how to get to your seat, like how we get to our seats at the stadiums. Yeah, yeah. they kind it's of the set, they set the stage for us. Yeah. That's the birthplace of it. Yeah. So that was super cool. Um, let's see. Anything else that's vital today? <coughs> I don't think so. We just did the Coliseum and the... Palatine Hill. And the Roman, what was it? Roman Roman Forum. Yeah. We were going to go to Circo Massimo, but we decided not to. Now, you will see video from that, from yesterday's footage when we walked past it. I believe I took some footage. That is where the chariot races were. So, imagine a long, almost like around the football field where the kids run track. But bigger. Yeah, similar to that, but bigger. That was also, from what I understand, and I don't have all the details, but I believe that that is where the Christians were fed to the lions for their beliefs, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. It was but, there, and then there was another one, circa something, under that was where also, the Vatican currently sits. Which is also a place where the Christians were fed to, persecuted, killed, and fed, to the, fed to the lions. So, that was a uh, ray of sunshine today to see, <laughs> you know, where I'm gladiators... Just focused, I just focused on the architecture and the, the stadium and tried not to think so much about what went on there. Yeah. But they did other stuff besides just... Gladiator Gladiators. killing. I mean, they filled that thing with water and did, like, pretend ship battles and stuff that's crazy. They uh, would have plays. And, I mean, there were good mm. things that took place there, too. But, um, yeah, this is, uh, it's been interesting. The architecture is gorgeous. I love, love, love the architecture. I really enjoyed Trastevere, and I really mm -hmm. enjoyed down by the Pantheon that mm -hmm. evening. Yeah, that was nice. When we were moseying around down there. I would say those were probably two of my big highlights. I mean, the tours were nice, and we got a lot of information, but they are fast. And there is a lot coming at you. And they are in places where there is a, a lot, lot of, of people. people. And, I mean... For better or worse, that really does impact us. We really are not big. I don't like people. On, we're a little slower me. paced than well, that. We're slower, and I don't like people. That and I know it's just a different environment, but they don't like if there's people walking on the sidewalk and you got two and there's only room for two and they're walking side by side they don't move for you to come this way. You have to like barrel through them, and they will barrel through you and. I, I'm tired of being shoulder checked and bumped into, and I, I've had my fill of people. Yeah, I would say that overall we flourished more where we were in smaller <laughs> Can we areas. Go back to the Yukon, <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> so this has been a fun trip. Um, I don't know if we'll come to Rome again. We don't only if it's on a route where we're passing. Yeah, through. we don't tend to repeat those kinds of places. Um, because there's just so much to see and do out there. I think next fall we'll probably aim to come back this way, hopefully for longer, because I don't think I'll do this short again, because no. that's another thing. This is some big travel days, and I think when we want when we travel like this, we prefer to be here for a little longer. At least longer. two weeks. Yeah. And have because more down days. Because we day, and it wouldn't have been as hard. Yes. Painful. We've, we felt pressed to try to do everything in a small amount of time. I think my heart's fine. It's the rest of my body is. Like pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> my heart's like, I got this. <laughs> but her knees, our hips. Oh, my back, my feet. Our feet. Oh, my God, our feet. So if we did 15,000 today, we're sitting at 85,000 plus steps in five days. <sighs> So I bet if you add up the other day, the airport, the airport days, days we're that we're going to be gonna, over a hundred thousand steps, it'll be our hundred thousand step trip. <laughs> and we wonder why Rome has kicked our butts. Well, that is why. All right, guys, we're going to go put our feet up. We'll see y'all. Yeah, pack. We'll see y'all when we are headed back to the states tomorrow. I do think we're going to try to find some food at the airport and not eat. I think I'd rather just not bad. eat. 
Not worth it. Anyway, so, all right. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. <laughs>